Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This is Sika Good, your virtual sister, and I come to you live and direct from my house in Canada. So I recently stumbled on a program that I would love to share with you, and it's called the Yukon Community Pilot Program. So I am going to share my screen with you so you have an idea of what this program is about. So, as you can see, there are four sections on this page, and please, with immigration stuff, I would like you to read, read, and read until you fully understand what everything is about. So, there is about the work permit, there is about the eligibility, and two other sections. That include the documents you need to apply, and then it shows you how to apply. So, under about the work permit section, it says, this work permit lets you work for up to three different employers in one of the participating Yukon communities. It's valid for two years and it doesn't need an LMIA. Wow, what a great news. But one thing I want you to be aware of is that only a few communities in the Yukon can actually participate in this program. And we have White Horse, Watson Lake, Dawson City, Haynes Junction, Carnox, and Carcass. So when you look under the work permit eligibility, you see three points. So you need to have two or three eligible job offers. You need to have a signed letter of support from the government of Yukon. And you need to meet the general requirement for a work permit. Now these links, it is important that you click on them so you are able to read in details to see what you need to apply. Trust me, it might look like it's overwhelming information, but it is not as hard as it looks. Just put your mind together, put your uh, papers together, and you will be just fine. So now, for the job offers, the eligible job offers that you need, the first thing on the list is that they must all be in the same participating Yukon communities. And those communities are the ones we cited earlier. They must add up to at least 30 hours of work a week. That means if you have three offers, the three offers must be equal to a full-time job. Let's say the three offers are part-time, part-time, that's okay, because all you need is for all of them to amount to a full-time job. They must not be non -se they must be non-seasonal. So what that means, for example, let's say you have um, Christmas that's coming and people are hiring just for Christmas. That type of job offer would not qualify because it is seasonal. They want it to be a full-time employment that you can have throughout the year to be making money and just being an active member of the community. The wage must meet or exceed the minimum wage. Your experience must show that you can perform the duties of the job offered. So again, those are just the specifics that you need on your employment letter to show to the government that, hey, it qualifies for what you are asking for. So now the next thing on our list is to gather the documents you need to apply. Before you apply for a work permit, you need to include these documents in your application. Now, first thing on our list is a copy of the nominee letter from the government of Yukon confirming that you've been nominated for permanent residence. Now, if you have not been nominated for permanent residence yet, this is the time to apply for it. So you get the letter of employment. You go to apply for provincial nomination. They will give you as long as you have the employment letters because it plays a huge part in you receiving the letter for provincial nomination. So as you get the letter or after you've gotten your letters of employment, make sure your next target is the nomination program for the province of Yukon. Next, you need a signed letter of support from the government of Yukon stating that the employers who are offering you the job need you to work in the community as soon as possible. That, guys, is a winner because as soon as you get it, you are good to go. Next thing on the list that you need is that the job offers are genuine. Now, do not just um, go for a friend that you know, for example, and just ask them to make up the letter of employment. No, apply for actual jobs and get real 
letters of employment because that will help you a great deal um, so the let the job offers need to be genuine the details of the job offers have to include the names of the employers the occupation the number of hours and the job location remember they all need to be in the same community and another great news with this pathway is that your employer is not required to submit an offer of employment in the employer portal they don't require that piece from your employer but your employer needs to provide you with a letter so next on our list is how to apply for the work permit you must apply online for the work permit you cannot apply on paper the application forms and process you need to follow depend on where you are applying from select where you're applying from to see your instructions if you're in Canada as a visitor only you don't have a work or study permit you need to select outside Canada option so we're going to select outside Canada option and see what it tells us we're going to click on continue so here we go applying from outside Canada the first step is to make sure you have what you need to apply online you need a scanner or a camera to create electronic copies of your documents or valid credit or debit card the step number two is to create your online account or sign in if you already have an account and you need to pay your fees submit your application and check your status now remember this pathway means that you already have been nominated by the province so you actually need to also create an account with the RSCC website so you can submit an application for your job uh, for your work permit and that will potentially lead to your permanent residence so for the step number three you need to check your country specific application requirements because it differs according to your country and step number four you need to prepare your answers to get your online checklist so according to step number four it also requires Canada requires that you be a tr as truthful as you can possibly be because they would tailor your checklist according to what you fill out and they show you how to fill out this section here so let's go back up to see what's under the you can nominee program and the first time I checked it they told me that page wasn't available so I had to press different I think I had to press the home option right here yes and it gave me some more information and I had to go look for immigration scroll down and down yep immigration is right there on the right and then it tells you immigrate to the Yukon hire a foreign worker contact the Turkey and Syria support desk uh, contact the Ukrainian family support desk but what concerns us is immigrate to the Yukon apply to immigrate to Yukon due to the large volume of applicants for the Yukon nominee program we are prioritizing some applications this is to ensure that businesses relying on the program can continue their essential operations and yes you will be surprised that they're actually prioritizing the list of people right here okay the first thing the first category of people they are prioritizing are visitors holders already in Canada current work permit holders with approaching expiration dates current work permit holders for example postgraduate work permits experiencing expiring sorry in a few months up to three years from now and the fourth category is individuals currently located outside Canada so as you can see if you're outside Canada at the moment you're watching this video this program will favor you a huge deal apply now guys apply right now and right here under you can nominate program process you will see the whole list of what you need to submit what they require from the employer for you to get the nomination it's all on the website and guys I will put it in the description box below so you can have 
access to it and read it. So this is just me now clicking different things to see different requirements, who can apply. If you want to hire a foreign worker through the Yukon Community Program, this is what you need to provide to the government. And again, they are mentioning the communities that qualify for it, uh, as you can see on the screen. And they also tell you who can apply, how long it takes, and all the benefits you get under that program. And I hope it will interest you to know that if a foreign employer hires you, they take care of everything. They really do take care of where you're going to stay, uh, at least for the beginning of the contract or the beginning of the journey. Don't quote me on that. I'm not too sure how it works because I'm not in the Yukon. But this is what I heard and I thought I'll bring it up to your knowledge as well. So yeah, just go through it. Have fun. Read, 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 read and read, guys. When I migrated to Canada over 10 years ago, these kind of news were not on the internet. Nobody was talking about quick and fast immigration to Canada, so I feel like we're privileged to have this pathways now. God bless Canada, God bless COVID, because COVID led to a lot of this happening even more. Um, so yeah, and guys, I am not, um, this is a disclaimer, I am not a legal, I'm not giving you any legal advice. This is just my personal research that I'm sharing with you. This, so don't take it as a legal advice, please and please and please. As I'm learning, you also go learn and you take what benefits you and share with your family and friends so they can also take what benefits them as well. So we've come to the end of this video. I hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe because I'm bringing more news about fast and good and easy pathways to immigrate to Canada. Uh, share with your family and friends and God bless you. Don't forget to like and subscribe.